Colorado is celebrating cannabis. There is expected to be around 30,000 people in attendance. The 420 Festival is bringing thousands of people to Denver, but there's some confusion surrounding the event. It is illegal for the public consumption of cannabis in the city and county of Denver and the state of Colorado. The Biden administration says don't put away your masks on public transportation just yet. The rules could change again. It's a horrible time uh, to lift uh, the mandate. And getting a college degree doesn't have to take four years. We want to help you take that first step in your education. A Colorado university is getting students into the workforce faster. Plus, the Nuggets Warriors series ships back to Denver, but the Nuggets will need more than a playoff crowd to get out of a two-game hole. We're going to lose together. We're going to win together. Yeah, speaking of coming together, today is the day people who love cannabis will be celebrating across Colorado as we take a live look from Civic Center Park, where the gates will open to the 420 Fest here in about an hour. Thanks for joining us on Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Brian Sanders. Tens of thousands of people are expected at Civic Center Park for the event today, uh, back in person for the first time in several years. Denver 7's Jessica Crawford joins us live from Civic Center Park, and some people are already gathering outside the park there, ready to make their way in. Obviously, uh, she lost audio and can't hear me, but that's okay. Organizers expect a crowd of about 50,000 to attend this uh, festival back in person for the first time in years, as we mentioned. Rappers, Big Boy from Outkast, Little John, even a talk show host will be there as a marijuana spokesman, Montel Williams, will be in attendance. The event is free. There is an event for, right, for people to RSVP to it. It starts at noon. This was an all hands on site. It was a two day build. Um, everything from the first piece of cable to the last piece of fence. I think what makes this event so special is Colorado being the first state to legalize recreational marijuana. And so obviously we got to stay true to home. And the festival comes after a slight controversy that happened earlier in the week, which involved the city of Denver. Uh, the city of Denver made a post which started with SUP Denverites and went on to say, don't roll up without a ticket. The city posted the message to Twitter and Facebook on Monday. It appeared to promote the Mile High 420 Festival happening at Civic Center Park. Some called it cringeworthy, though. The post, which has since been deleted, had the call to action of fight the stigma surrounding marijuana use. To give some context, using marijuana in public is still illegal in Colorado, so the city is confusing the messaging, and it sparked controversy on social media. Denver police put out an alert overnight reminding you not to smoke at the pot festival. But in years past, they've had to look the other way because there's so much smoking going on. Colorado State University researchers, meanwhile, say cannabis production can impact the environment. It's because our climate requires so much energy to keep the plants at proper temperatures. They found producing cannabis indoors makes up about 2% of the total greenhouse gas emissions in our state. Dispensaries are also trying to reduce their carbon footprint. So we stopped by Life Flower Dispensary in Glendale. They use energy efficient grow bulbs, biodegradable hemp, plastic containers, and tell customers how to recycle them. They also chose local suppliers that grow sustainably in greenhouses. This industry is all focused around a plant and it's really important that we keep that plant sacred and the environment that it's in sacred. Life Flower says going green isn't always easy because prices for eco-friendly products are rising, just like most other goods right now. Colorado is selling more than $5 million in marijuana products each day, although sales are actually dropping. State data shows sales were about $145 million in February, the last month that we, Colorado has records for. That's down about $20 million, though, from last February. Sales have been falling each month but one over the last year. More information about COVID-19 boosters will be released to the public soon. A CDC advisory committee is meeting today to talk about the extra doses. Officials expect to talk about creating a framework for future shots. And it's now been two days since a federal judge struck down a nationwide mask mandate for planes and other public transportation. A new poll finds that most Americans actually support a mask requirement. 
The Associated Press found 56% of Americans favor the mandate. Only about a quarter of Americans are opposed and 20% were neutral about the mandate. It is important to note the AP surveyed people last week, so before the mandate was struck down. Hours after the ruling, airlines and airports immediately scrapped the mask requirements, and now the Department of Justice is considering an appeal. As Rena Roy reports, the rules could change once again. As some Americans rejoice over going maskless, I think it's wonderful. In fact, I'm ecstatic. The Justice Department saying the new rules may not last for long, saying they'll appeal if the CDC believes the federal mask mandate on transportation is still necessary. The CDC saying overnight that it recommends masks during travel and that it will assess the need for a mask requirement. For now, the TSA no longer enforcing masks on planes, major airlines dropping their requirements. My wife who's pregnant and my four-year-old daughter, who's not yet old enough to be vaccinated, flew out to California thinking that the mask mandates would be in effect on both legs of our trips. And halfway through, it's going to be a different situation. Face coverings are no longer required on trains, buses, or transportation hubs either. But those rules vary by location, and it's not so simple. For example, you can fly in and out of New York City and Philadelphia without a mask, but have to wear one while walking through the airport because of local mandates. These complicated rules coming at a time when more than half the U.S. is seeing an increase in cases. And a subvariant of BA2 was first discovered last week here in New York. It could be about 25% more contagious than BA2. It's already estimated to account for nearly a fifth of new daily COVID cases in the U.S. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Congress wants to take back COVID-19 relief funds that were set aside for small businesses. Two billion dollars hasn't been distributed yet. The money was left over from programs that already expired. The Biden administration has asked Congress for more COVID-19 funding. Senate Republicans argue that any new funding needs to be offset by repurposing COVID relief money already passed by Congress. Colorado lawmakers want more people to be able to afford a home. A bill designed to help a group called the Missing Middle is up for its first hearing in the state Senate this afternoon. The Missing Middle are people with steady jobs, but they don't qualify for affordable housing programs. The legislation would create a revolving loan program where $25 million for the program would come from the Affordable Housing and Home Ownership Cash Fund. Higher education is also expensive. Some students are saving money by spending just months in school before they enter the workforce, and they're doing it by stacking credentials. Denver 7's Nicole Brady explains the concept and how it could be the way to pursue a degree in the future. Stackable credentials are really a convergence of individuals wanting to learn in smaller chunks and industries being willing to accept those chunks. It's a pretty simple concept when you consider that most people go to college to get that piece of paper that shows they're able to do a job. So why should that take four years? Bachelor's degrees have been around for about 800 plus years. And you think of everything else that has changed, yeah. except for the bachelor's degree, right? MSU is changing things with a new model allowing students to earn a credential that can land them a job, or they can keep adding credentials. We want to help you take that first step in your education. And if you decide you have enough there, we're going to tell you how much money you can make based on Colorado Department of Labor information and go get a job. And if you decide you want to continue your education, come right back to MSU Denver, nothing's lost. That will stack into whatever else you want to continue into. It's a model state Senator Rachel Zenzinger wants other schools to adopt. She's co-sponsoring a bill directing the state higher ed department to come up with stackable credential pathways for at least three growing industries by 2024 and two more by 2025. We want people, no matter where they are in life, to be able to have the most uh, efficient pathway to degree and create just a series of stepping stones that all work in alignment with one another so that you are never uh, being inefficient with your time or with your dollars. <laughs> MSU has created pathways in growth industries like health, cybersecurity, even space flight, programs designed with input from the industries. Business is part of it up front helping us build the courses that will meet their demand. But more importantly, they're meeting the demands of students. We've got to create new on-ramps and off-ramps for students. Business understands it, MSU Denver understands it, our population understands it. Nicole Brady, Denver 7.
Well, the Denver Nuggets will have to dig themselves out of a hole in their playoff series against the Warriors. They are down two games to none now. And it's a hole that can't just be filled by having two straight games at Ball Arena. Returning to Ball Arena might help lift the Nuggets' spirits, but the Nuggets are struggling on both sides of the ball right now, and their struggles push them to infighting during Monday's game. We still playing against the same guys. We still have to go out there and execute. The fans not going to win us the game. They can help. Coach can help. But at the end of the day, if we don't correct it and be better, it's going to be the same result. Hopefully, we, we, we can uh, kind of find a better flow defensively in, op in offensively. Games three and four are at Ball Arena. Tip off tomorrow is at eight and then Sundays game four is at 130 and you can catch that game right here on Denver seven. The Rockies outfielder Charlie Blackman is the first active major league player to endorse a sports book. ESPN reports Blackman will be the brand ambassador for Maxim Bet. He will not be allowed to promote betting on baseball, which is league policy, but opportunities to make deals with sports books were included in baseball's new collective bargaining agreement. A Colorado girl is finding a new use for wasted paper. Coming up, we'll show you how she's using unwanted junk mail to help plants grow. Plus, work begins on a project to make one of Colorado's most beautiful places accessible again.